there, welcome back to another review. Today I thought we'd have a look at the first film in the Gamera series, Gamera the Giant Monster, and just give it a look, what I thought about it, is it a good movie, is it a good kaiju movie. I will hopefully try and get through all the Gamera films, but we'll start with the first one and just go from there. Um, made in 1965, and we've sort of done a sort of a rival, obviously, to sort of the big kaiju boom, and just sort of to rival the Godzilla films, because at the time, Godzilla really didn't have meant much in the way sort of a rivals as sort of like box office competition i'm sure there was like i'm sure there was other like kaiju films big monster films being made but there was no body like there was no sort of film franchise that was really giving godzilla a run for his money that was sort of like his contemporary that was sort of the box office rival that was selling seats and was a big you know hit with audiences and fans so godzilla pretty much had a bulk of the market to himself so this was another studio's answer, Godzilla obviously being done by Toho. This was another studio's answer to sort of rival that. And, um, you know, Gamera was sort of the way they thought, okay, well, let's see what we can do. Let's try something. Let's do a Godzilla film. Let's do our own version of a Godzilla film, you know. Um, the film was originally meant to be about giant rats, believe it or not. They was actually going to use, obviously, normal rats, but just film them sort of climbing over miniatures and things like that. Well, be, being like rats... Being unpredictable as they are, um, there was not only that was an issue, another issue was these things, you know, basically they were completely infested with fleas. Um, they were wild rats, obviously, so, that, you know, it, it just wasn't going to work. So the, the health like company had to get involved, sort of shut down production. So that was not just not going to happen, um, you know, and I think, you know, if you've got rats that are just infested with fleas, I don't think anybody thinks that's going to be a healthy sort of uh, production and a good shoot. But they were determined to make a film. Um, they were determined to make a film. They were determined, to, with little resources they had, they were determined to prevail and to get something done and to come up with a finished product and to find, like, to have a kaiju movie that would sort of be an alternative to Godzilla um, to sort of... You know, they didn't have much in the way of resources. They didn't have the right equipment. The script was barely finished. There was 40 props. It was a very troubled sort of... Um, production this film with a lot of people didn't have a lot of faith in it they didn't think it was going to get made there was a lot of um, doubt about the movie a severe a severe lot of doubt about the movie um, which you have to give credit to these people for just prevailing and continuing and getting this film done um, so like I, the, they decided on the idea basically of a giant turtle some say tortoise I'm pretty sure Gamera is a turtle um, there was, like I say, little faith in the movie. People think it was never, ever going to rival Godzilla. Um, but director, I want to say Noriaki Yuasa, I think that's his name, um, he was determined to get something done and full credit to him to sort of carrying on with uh, you know, with his vision and what he wanted to do. Um, you know, they gave uh, Gamera the ability and the, like, basically his person in a suit, but they, what made set him apart was he can like sort of walk on all fours. Um, a lot of kaiju, like the monsters in the film, they're basically just standing on two legs. So this set uh, Gamera a sort of apart from, you know, his contemporaries. Very different from sort of upright monsters. Um, released in the West as Gamera the Invincible, uh, the film was also heavily re-edited with new scenes added to cater to the Western audiences. But here I'll be looking at the original. The, the Western version is on this, um, released by, by Arrow. I will try and get through all the Gamera films, as I say, but we'll start with the first one today. Um, and I'll be looking at the Japanese, the original uh, version, um, because that's just, I always sort of go with the original first, foremost, rather than sort of re-edits, re, you know, just sort of where um, an outside company has got involved. Um, I just sometimes like to just look at the original, the way it's meant to be, and the way it was shot, and the way it was filmed, and, you know, things like that. Um, when when released, the film, it was a lot bigger hit than they anticipated. As I said, they didn't have a lot of faith in this, but it was actually a lot bigger than what they initially thought it was going to be. I think why people like these films is just they just provide an alternative to Godzilla. You know, whether you're a fan of kaiju or not, I mean, if you're not, you probably won't watch these films. But what I mean is if, like, if you're only just solely Godzilla, you, you might get bored of Godzilla. So you think, okay, what's what's Gamera like, you know, so it gives you sort of that alternative there between two, um, while definitely not as popular, you know, Gamera definitely has his fans, he's definitely got his following, um, and the debut, while not the best film, it does have its moments, um, especially when you consider how troubled the production was, the budget, and just what was going on sort of behind the camera, you can tell they really tried, and they put a lot of effort into getting the film completed with limited resources, and like I say, a very, very troubled production. 
So the film opens in the Arctic at this sort of Eskimo camp where this research team has come to visit them, visit these Eskimos. Then we see some sort of unidentified aircraft flying over, which is shot down by an American fighter jet. And this one that gets shot down, this plane crash lands, which happens to be carrying an A-bomb of all things. So it crashes and then it just happens to reawaken Gamera. Um, so basically a giant fire-breathing, fire-eating, flying turtle. Um, thinking he's dead because of the radiation, people then start seeing fly, flying saucers in the sky. We then cut to this young boy that, that is obsessed with his pet turtle and is told to get rid of it by his family. After doing so, Gamera appears, the boy believing him to be his pet turtle, believes, and he, the whole time the boy is believing that he is good, like he's like, you know, stop hurting Gamera. Um, He's like he's thinking he's not bad, he's not bad, he's not trying to hurt anybody. Um, and then he starts heading for the geothermal plant, Gamera, n not the boy. Um, the government uses like a freeze bond on him, on him, um, and when they get him on his back, to which he starts sort of road. I'm I'm really skipping loads of beats here, but I'm just giving you an idea, just sort of basically how I remember the film. He starts heading to this geothermal plant, and then they use like this freeze bomb that uh, sort of only works for like ten minutes. Then they get him on his back, and he starts like spinning round fire comes out and then he just sort of goes airborne he starts flying um like then he takes off um then they decide to launch the z the z plan z plan which is basically lure him to an island to launch him into space and that's basically the plot of the film so you know gamera appears goes to a like a geothermal plant starts like they start feeding him petrol and explosion they think right what we're we going to do we're killing time here and it's like right let's launch that island there's a rocket there we can launch him into space that's basically the bulk of the film just to give, give you a very quick very very quick idea of the plot um what i love about this film is you see gamera right away there's no long build up to the film there's no there's no long build up to like the creature being revealed or anything like that. Um, it's you do see him like literally straight away. You know, like they in sort of um, one of the more recent kaiju films that I really did love um, was Kong Skull Island. Like where they don't they don't keep you waiting that long. Like literally within the first five ten minutes, like you see Kong. It's very much like that in this. They don't hang around. It's like there's Gamera. There he is. You know, we don't need to do any build up or anything like that. Um, you know, if this was remade by Hollywood, we probably wouldn't see him for about, like, the hour mark. You know what I mean? You probably wouldn't see anything until about an hour in. They would just keep teasing you and teasing you to the point of, like, yeah, I think I'm meant to be watching a kaiju film, but I'm not seeing any giant monsters. Uh, at the start, it's never really explained, I don't think, what is going on with the planes. I don't really think that's even acknowledged, sort of, what the planes... I know that like, the Americans get involved, but I'm not sure what these planes are that are going overhead who are carrying the A-bomb. I'm not sure. Maybe I missed something there. I mean, I've seen this film quite a number of times, but um, I'm just not sure what they're doing there. But anyway, the Americans shoot them down. Um, you know, what? Have, also, the expedition that gets killed... Um, you know, basically the the ship they come over on, basically the, the rest of the crew sort of get killed and their ship gets wrecked by Gamera. It's not really explained how um, the Doctor and his teams, they get back, like the, the remaining survivors. Again, may, I may have missed something, but it's never really explained how they got back to safety. But again, I'm nitpicking, probably reading a bit too much into the plot. Um, the boy in this who is determined to see Gamera, he, I mean, he can, he's like... Uh, solid snake basically i mean he can just walk into any ore refinery any military guarded place where they are feeding you know this giant turtle it must have been cautioned it must have been sectioned off and this kid can just get in anywhere for some reason this kid just is able to get in places that nobody else can um you know he's sneaking into crates he's you know he's getting to the island where they plan to launch the rocket you know how he gets to all these places sometimes is anyone's guess, but he just manages to get in there. He just manages to find himself there with all these army guys, with all these government people, and he is right there with all these military people. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a little solid snake, this guy. Um, and I think as well, also at the end, when he goes to the island and they're doing like Plan Z, um, did he have any knowledge that that was what they were going to do? Did he just go there on a hunch? From what I could tell, I think he did. I don't because I, nobody outside of the military would have known that was what their plan was going to be. 
but he decided to go to the island anyway, Oshima Island, I think it is. So he just goes there, I think, on a whim. I think he just thinks, OK, well, look, something must be going on over there. Because I think they section it off and he somehow gets there. I don't know, but I'm reading too much into it. I'm just me just picking on plot points. Um, so he must have, like I said, but maybe a bit of a sixth sense going on as well. I mean, obviously the bad acting and lack of sense in these kind of films are just sort of standard anyway. That's like, please don't think it's me picking on Gamera. Um, it's not me because I, I love this movie. I love all the Gamera films. Um, it's not me. I'm just sort of just having a bit of fun with it. Um, as I say, I'm not knocking the film at all. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, sometimes lack of plot, the acting, it, it's all part of what makes it so good sometimes. Um, and and I, like I said, I understand that's just that's standard and I'm being, by no means criticising this film. Uh, whilst not bad, you have to admire, like I say, the director and crew for making a film like they did and what the finished product was. Um, you know, hats off to them completely, a real testament for doing things on very limited uh, resources and what was available and on a very small budget. I mean, it, like I say, even filmed in black and white to cut cost as well. A lot of shots of Gamera do look awesome, especially sort of in the rain. When he's in the rain with sort of the fire around him, sort of like the oil finery at the plant and things like that, it, it looks really cool. And I think sometimes the black and white works well with that. I think uh, some of the shots really it do, you know, it looks really, um, really fantastic. It looks great on camera. <coughs> But with the oil refinery around him and the explosions and the fire and the rain, it just looks cool. Some of, some of the shots in this are really well done. Really, really well done. Um, I love how at the end, when you look at it, Gamera didn't really do anything that wrong. He really didn't do anything that bad. He Okay, he smashed a few places up and things, but he really, um, you know... He wasn't really doing anything evil. He was just sort of walking around, just minding his own business kind of thing. Um, he didn't, you know, it was uh, it was us that sort of woke him up. It was our fault anyway. Then we just basically send him to space. You know, no food, no water, nothing. You know, they've basically gone, you'll be all right. And the kid's like, we'll see you again. So it's like, how do you know? You haven't, you're just sending him off to space. It's probably the last thing he wants. You know, it's... That you just send him off. He's like, well, thanks a lot. I thought we were bonding, and you've just sent me off into space and this like this blooming rocket. Um, so no clear sign he will survive. I mean, but the kid's not worried. The kid's like confident he'll see you, see you again. And it's, like I say, this kid knows his stuff. He's got a sixth sense. He can get into places. He knows where where Gamera is and things like that. So, um, but again, just nitpicking both. I just love how that was their logic. Just launch him into space. Just like right off you go. Um, so. If all you have, the only advice I could give people that if all you have seen is Godzilla, it's definitely working. It's definitely worth checking out this kaiju alternative and just enjoy it for what it is. And like I say, although it might sound like I'm picking on Gamera, I'm not at all. I absolutely love this movie. As I say, I love them all, and I will try and get round to reviewing them all. But if you've only ever seen the original Godzilla, or especially if you've only seen sort of the American Godzillas, give some like the older Japanese kaiju films like the original sort of chance and give them sort of a um, you know time of day because they are always worth checking out and they all of them do have this little charm um, and just people like I say just you know there was love going into the production and just people making a film because they just wanted to get it finished and they wanted to get it done and you know a labour of love as well for these people but um, yeah check it out if you've never seen it and thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon